I should have started with this video before talking about the detectors, but honestly I felt that I should have clarified the concept of detectors before. So now, I am presenting you with one of the most awesome tools that you can ever have in Google Workspace. Unfortunately, it is an enterprise only feature and as a result, not everyone might have this tool and you might not have this tool in your account. But if you do, then you are really lucky. So in order to make sure the concept of DLP rules is simplified as much as possible, I think it is easy to look at it in this way. So there are four stages for a DLP rule. Of course, after you create the rule and after you activate the rule. So first of all, you define the rule and you decide if this is a drive related rule or if it is an email related rule. And then once the rule is active, it will start scanning the content, whether it's email or drive. And once a match is found, once the detector is triggered, then there are two cases in here. For the emails, the action will be either the message will be modified by adding headers or adding recipients, or actually changing the whole routing of the email and delivering this to some different destination, or some other person or actually putting the email message in the quarantine so that you can later review it and take a decision on it or just drop the message and send an NDR that the message is not delivered or is not sent according to the direction of that message. Now if you're talking about a drive content then if somebody is sharing the file and then the detector is triggered based on that action then you will stop or you will block the external sharing or actually you will show a notification or a warning when the users want to share the file externally that you are sharing files externally, be careful or you're just sharing files you should not be sharing so you should reconsider, you know, whatever message you want to show to the users. Or finally, if you have that option or if you want to consider that option, then you can disable the copy, download or printing options for the file and just have the users share the file as view only. This is a very critical setting and a very important thing because it allows your users to keep sharing files externally but then you have the control over who can manipulate, who can get access to the or who can copy this file and print it. And you, this way you can actually just make it a screen only or a view only content and file. Now this is the logic of the rule, but then how do you create one? Well, it's a very straightforward one and thing. I have shown you the start for this in the previous video. So in the admin console, when you go to security and then data protection, and then when you go to rules or manage rules, then you just go to add rule then you select a new rule in the new rule you have a few details to fill out so first of all of course you need to type a name for the rule so for example block sharing of project x content you know just something generic there and that's the name the the display stuff for you but then you have the scoop as well this is where you decide to you know, affect the rule on what users or what OUs in your organization. Now, I always recommend that you test it in a testing OU or on a testing group of users before rolling this out to the whole organization. Just because you are creating detectors or you are creating a rule that can detect content, then it's important that you don't get false content or you don't detect or you don't cause false positives which will affect the user's performance and the user's experience. So it you can just select an OU and you have you can have like a testing OU there or you can create a group and that group can be a testing group and then you test the rule on this group. So whatever you want to choose here in my case I'm just selecting all because you know I don't have any users here any production users at least. Then this rule is for drive. So it's going to ask you to select the triggers that you want to use for this rule. And basically it's just a single trigger for Google Drive, file creation, modification, upload, or sharing. 
and then the conditions here this is where you choose the detectors so when you add condition you choose what scope this condition should apply to it makes sense to have it for all content you know if you want to do this otherwise you can set it to title or suggested edits or the body and again it's you know based on the case and how the usage is in your organization then the value here this is where you select the detector so if you say contents then this is a direct you know rule or a direct matching so you don't really use any detector there it's just a single word to match in the whole content which is not really effective then when you go to the detectors you have the custom detectors matches a rejects detector or a wordless detector so you can have the you select here of course if you have anything but i don't have anything so when you look at the predefined detectors then when you select the data type i've again explained this in the previous video so you select whatever detector that you want here so bank account for example iban and then the level of confidence in this detect or in this detection you can either have it a very high level or high or medium now the high you go the less false positives you might have but then the more likely you will skip real content that should have been detected by the rule so if you go to high or medium this might be something for you to look at if you're really confident that the, the, the data or the content is not going to have multiple formats and it's going to be a single format like 11 digits and that cannot have spaces and if there is a space then it will be either a dash or just a single space then you probably might want to use high or very high again depending on the data that you want to detect minimum unique matches it's for example if people are sending one bank account number in an email or in a file and then that will be considered as a single unique match but then if they are adding two bank account numbers then that will be two unique matches so if you set this to two then if people are sending a single bank account number in their email that is going to pass through this whole thing and it's not going to trigger any action because you're setting the minimum unique matches to two so people have to send at least two bank account numbers in a document so to, to trigger this rule so it's always safe to use this as one if you want to make sure that no content like this is being sent or leaked out of the organization then the minimum match count this is the total amount or total number of matches that should be counted in the content that is being scanned so going back to our previous example if people are sending a single bank account number in a file but then they have put this in two places of the file or in three places of the file then it will be triggered or it will be matched three times so that is you know three matches if you say that if you don't want people to send or if you don't want people to repeat the bank account number in a file more than one time then you would set this to two and if they have the bank account number in the document for one time only or they put it in a single place that's going to pass but then if there is another match then this rule will be triggered so that's how the you know dlp detection and the triggers work so once you have your detector or your condition or criteria done your next step or your next action will be to define what is the action that you want to do when this detector is triggered now of course because the dlp rules are going to affect how emails or files are being sent and created and shared it's important that whatever rule you created as mentioned just a moment ago it's properly tested and you exactly know the behavior for this before you put it in production and roll it out to your users this is why they made it possible for you to create an audit only dlp rule this is basically just a logging rule in other words where it will not perform any action on any matched content however it's going to log that uh, event or match so that you can see it later in the audit log this way you can test the rule and you will know the behavior and who is triggering this rule 
at least you can monitor what's going on before or without taking any action even and you you will know that it is affecting the right scope of content through the results and what you will see in the logs so the way to do this is by not selecting any action in the actions card or the actions section so if you open this you see there are three actions block external sharing warn on an external sharing or disable the download print and copy for the commenters and viewers so if you keep it unchecked or if you keep it unselected you're still going to be able to create the rule it's not going to give you any error but then this is when you want or where you want to trigger the alert or where you want to have the monitoring going on so the alerting it's setting the severity for this alert to low but then you can make it medium or high and you can send it to the alert center and uh, send a notification for the super administrators or anyone you want who want to receive this alert so that they can investigate or take action or just be notified about this violation that happened and if you go to continue you will find the review or the summary for this rule and if you notice at the bottom at the action the alerts are enabled but then the actions there are none only logs will be collected and the severity is high then you can create the rule now in the next video i will be showing you a demonstration two use cases for one default or predefined detector and another one for a custom detector so that you can see the behavior for both of these then you can build your own detectors and your own rules later on